How much has already been written about the sixth generation fighter? Terabytes of information. This volume is certainly greater than the volume of the actual technical documentation for the project itself. This airplane has become a kind of myth, as was the myth in the Middle Ages about the Philosopher's Stone capable of turning mercury into gold. They said a lot of things about this machine and that there are already prototypes flying at a speed of Mach 6 or 7 that already have laser weapons and are completely invisible, and even has an anti-gravity engine on the same mercury. In this video, we'll try to separate the flies from the cutlets to see what the real 6th generation fighter will be like. Spoiler, in our opinion, it'll not be the same as many people imagine it to be. But watch this video till the end to understand what we're talking about. There is no stopping the march of technological progress. Therefore, it's quite logical that the fifth generation airplane should be replaced by the next sixth generation airplanes. By the way, the American program of their development is called NGAD, or Next Generation Air Dominance, which was started 10 years ago and during this time, as we've already said, has acquired an incredible number of myths. And under their terabyte weight, somehow lost the fact that there's no single point of view. And what should be the sixth generation fighter? It had seemed that it's quite easy to imagine the requirements that the next sixth generation airplane should have. You look at the fifth generation fighter, the same F-22 Raptor, tighten it, make its technical characteristics even higher, and you get the sixth generation machine. The F-22 has a top speed of Mach 2.25, so 2410 kilometers an hour or 1500 miles per hour. And the Russians have the MiG-31 Interceptor fighter flying at 3,100 kilometers an hour or 1,925 miles per hour, which is Mach 3. And it's four generations old in general. So our airplane should fly at Mach 5. So hypersonic speed. The F-22 has a deflectable thrust vector, hence super maneuverability. So our airplane should be no worse in this respect and even better. In fact, it can spin like a skull to dodge any missile. Fifth generation fighters invisible to the radio range? So the sixth generation machine should be even more invisible and in infrared range. Better still, it should be visual. Of course, there are a few more mandatory requirements that must be met by an airplane in the first half of the 21st century. After all, the sixth generation fighter is planned to be put on the wing in the early 30s and operate at least until the early 60s. This is multifunctionality. So not only a fighter, but also a bomber, scout, and maybe even an attack aircraft. After all, the F-35 was tested in such a role to replace the veteran A-10 Thunderbolt II. The attempt was recognized as a failure, but maybe in the sixth generation it'll work? Of course, highly integrated networking capabilities are mandatory to receive and transmit the maximum amount of information from the maximum number of combat participants, other aircraft, air defense systems, etc. And what sixth generation fighter without its swarm of drones, which will do all the dangerous work for it? Fly into the enemy air defense zone, attack targets there, scout for the necessary information? That's why there should be at least one wingman and preferably several. Of course, such an aristocrat as a sixth generation fighter must also have its own outstanding personal weapon, his sword. For the first half of the 21st century as a sword are long range hypersonic missiles, both air to air and air to surface. It's also obligatory to have artificial intelligence on board, which in principle can control the airplane without a human pilot. So you have presented the image of the sixth generation fighter. Does it seem simple? No, it's not because there's such a concept as technical capabilities and such a cornerstone philosophical concept as the transition of quantity into quality. Not quite clear? Let me explain. What does hypersonic speed mean? It's qualitatively different characteristics of engines, powerful thermal protection, which should protect the aircraft, but at the same time to ensure the ability to communicate and the work of numerous sensors, such as radiation sensors that signal that the machine has fallen within the range of enemy radars. Recall that the body of hypersonic missiles is heated to 2,000 degrees. This is plasma in which radio communication does not work. Yes, and radio-absorbing coating at such temperatures is unlikely to feel comfortable. 
Now let's ask ourselves the question, why in fact does an airplane have hypersonic speed? To run away from an enemy hypersonic missile? It won't. In any case, the missile will be faster. After all, it's much easier for it to do so. It's a disposable product. It doesn't need the engine to have thousands of engine hours before it fails. It doesn't need to have some sort of multifunctionality that inevitably weighs down the design. Its job is to accomplish just one flight and one mission. So missiles will always be faster than airplanes. By the way, and more maneuverable? For the same reasons. Even if there's no human in the cockpit of an airplane, it'll not be able to maneuver at the same loads as a missile. If only because the wings would fall off, which the missile doesn't have. It's like a spear, rigid and strong. So why does a modern airplane need super maneuverability? Now about invisibility, so stealth technology. A material body will always be visible. It's axiomatic for the simple reason that it's material, which means it somehow interacts with the material world. Of course, radio-absorbing coatings can be further refined, but quantum radars are on the way. And already modern radars work in several ranges at once. And if an airplane is invisible in one band, it'll be seen in another. And infrared radiation? No matter how deep you put the engine in the airplane, in any case, a hot jet of exhaust gases will fly out of it. We're not alone in this thinking. Jonathan Greenert, a retired American admiral who led U.S. Navy naval operations from 2011 to 2015, said, Running away from a missile is still impossible. And no matter how you use stealth technology, you can't become completely invisible. You're still going to leave a trail of some sort. If something's moving fast in the sky, it heats up as it interacts with air molecules, and it doesn't matter how cool the engine exhaust is, you'll still be noticed. The authoritative magazine The National Interest says the same thing. Russia and China are working on new air defense systems that include radars operating in the UHF and VHF bands. These radars could undo the considerable effort America has spent on building fifth-generation fighter jets. Stealth aircraft the size of fighter jets may be difficult to detect for only the high-frequency radars used for fire control, which operates in the KU, X, C, and partially S bands. What conclusion can be drawn from here? That a sixth-generation aircraft doesn't have to be super fast and super maneuverable. You can't beat missiles at that anyway. Stealth? Of course we need it. But not to try and dash into the enemy's air defense zone, wreak havoc there, and jump out. It won't work. Most likely, such a dashing attacker will be quickly grounded by the air defense. And it won't be a soft landing. The invisibility is for something else. We'll tell you what for later. What should be the real image of the sixth-generation fighter was already clearly stated, the same 10 years ago when the NGAD program started. It was said by putting the F-35 Lightning II into service. Many people deny it, the title of fifth-generation fighter, and consider it almost some ugly duckling compared to the beautiful Swan F-22 Raptor. And its speed is less, and it has no formless supersonic and super maneuverability, and invisibility is not better. But above, we have already shown that a modern fighter neither needs huge speeds nor super maneuverability. The F-35 embodies a completely different concept of a modern fighter. It's a computerized platform whose task is to be a launching pad for intelligent, long-range means of defeat and at the same time, their control center. That's why the term complex is increasingly used concerning modern combat aircraft emphasizing the integration of the intelligence of weapons into the intelligence of the aircraft. That's why the F-22 Raptor, ultra-modern by the logic of the fourth-generation plus aircraft, but insanely expensive to build and operate, has come off the line, and the ugly duckling of the F-35 Lightning II is coming off the assembly line as if it were a thousand-dollar electric scooter, not an airplane worth a hundred million dollars. They already have produced more than a thousand units of all modifications. Now imagine that this computerized platform will not only be able to avoid entering the enemy's air defense zone, but it'll also not have to catch up with the enemy, hide from him, or conduct a maneuvering air battle with him. Why? A long-range missile launched from a platform will find the target itself long before the target can dodge or take other defensive action. Dogfights, as in fighter aviation traditionally called maneuvering air battles, are a thing of the past. If the aircraft has to face the combat task of defending itself against enemy missiles, the emphasis of the defense will be on systems that can confuse them 
so that it simply does not find the target or destroy it on approach. The speed and stealth properties that have traditionally been prioritized in the development of fighter aircraft are indeed being sidelined. Now stealth is needed not to be invisible, but to ensure that, at a great distance, the enemy could not understand what is approaching him. A deadly aircraft capable of firing a long-range hypersonic missile and hitting the target? Or a small drone? So he couldn't decide whether to intercept his fighters or not. Let's summarize. The sixth-generation fighter is likely to be a plane with a maximum speed in the region of Mach 2 and without any super maneuverability. Its stealth will most likely be better than that of the F-35, but only due to natural technical progress in radio-absorbing materials. Perhaps it will be tailless, like the B-2 Spirit or B-21 Raider, so that there will be no reflection of radio signals from his tail plumage. But it will not be completely invisible for sure but it will certainly have long-range hypersonic missiles, outstanding networking capabilities, and of course, winged drones. Laser weapons? There will be, but most likely as a defensive weapon. Blind the homing heads of enemy missiles, it won't burn through the holes of enemy planes. The sixth-generation fighter will embody the principle that was humorously formulated by one of the developers of the F-35 Lightning II. Our engineers took a computer and built a plane around it. Perhaps these airplanes will eventually be called Generation 5 Plus machines, and we won't see a Generation 6 sci-fi airplane for another 50 years. We hope we haven't disappointed you with our vision of a sixth-generation American fighter jet, but it seems to us that a realistic approach is always better than a fantasy one. We'll be very interested to know how you imagine the sixth-generation fighter. Write about it in your comments below. We'd be glad to have your comments, thumbs up, and subscription to our channel about modern weapons. See you soon.